All right, so I wanted to give my third update on my palette expansion journey and give an update on how it's going so far. I'm almost to month four, I believe. And to also talk about some preliminary prep work that I did to make sure that optimal bone growth could happen and, you know, teeth wouldn't become too loose and um, some preliminary prep work like with your blood work. Um, but then also ancillary work, working with other practitioners, chiropractors, osteopaths, and how that can benefit your palate expansion journey. So um, overall, kind of going into month four, I'm definitely noticing a lot more space in my mouth for my tongue and also a lot more gaps in my teeth. So I mentioned in my last video that I started to have a gap here and um, that gap has slightly increased. I think you can see it now. Um, and then I also have a second one right in between those two teeth that is forming. Um, so that is really exciting. Again, like I said in my last video, most of my expansion work is happening at the back of my mouth in my molar space because on this right side, it was just pushed in so far and it was a really bad cross bite. So most of that expansion is currently happening on this back right side, um, but still a little bit expansion forward and open. So those gaps are um, wonderful to see happening. Um, and then eventually once they all have their own space, they can all straighten out to where they're supposed to be. So overall, I'm really, really happy with my progress so far. Um, and I am not currently using the face mask that I talked about in my last video, um, just because I've felt that the palette expander has been enough for me so far. And I've actually felt like I needed a few more extra like integration days of turning it and then needing a few extra days to for my mouth to kind of settle into this new place of expansion and just making sure that I'm not moving too quickly for my body to keep up. Um, so, so far that has been really good. I did notice um, like at the beginning of month three when I did my turns that I started to get some headaches and I wasn't even able to wear my glasses. As you've seen in my last videos, I wasn't wearing them and I'm able to wear them again, thank goodness. Um, but there was just so much pressure going on in like in my temporal area and throughout my skull and I was getting headaches and migraines, which I don't have any history of ever getting those. So I started to see a osteopath who does a one hour full body uh, investigation of all your joints and your muscles. And he worked for a lot of time on my head. He worked inside my mouth as well and on all of the cranial bones. Um, specifically, he worked a long time on the sphenoid bone, which is at the center of your skull. And it touches a lot more other bones in your cranial system. Um, and so he spent a lot of time working on that. And that really, really helped me get a lot of relief because with that expansion happening, thing, uh, things elsewhere are going to shift. That is just inevitable. And we need to work with those systems and not fight against them to keep our goal moving forward, so to say. So um, I did the osteopath. I also felt like I needed to really integrate massage um, just because of that expansion. That's also going to shift the muscles that are connected up to um, all your occipital region and up through your head and then the tendons and ligaments and they're all connected. So um, I also started to get some more body work done and massage wise on all the shoulders in the neck space and that really helped ever since i've been doing these things i haven't been getting any more headaches so um that's been really great and i also don't feel that same resistance that i felt where i felt like i needed a few extra days of integration for my body to settle into the new adjustment on my mouthpiece um so i think that is a really big um contributing factor in somebody's treatment plan um, some other things I've been looking into is Postural Restoration Institute and finding somebody to work with who can um, do what they do at the PRI. And essentially, PRI is looking at your malocclusion and what's going on with your mouth, but they're also looking at how that connects with your eyeballs and your prescription and your glasses, as well as your gait and your posture and um, all of these different neurological connections throughout the entire body. So that's something else that I am seeking out and would recommend 
to somebody else who is doing this treatment. Maybe even go see a PRI specialist before you do the treatment because there's a lot that can be done to change your mouth without doing any kind of palate expansion, which is really cool. So um, that's something else. I'm also seeing a chiropractor weekly as well. I'm seeing somebody who is neurologically trained. So you can find a chiropractors who are specialized in like functional neurology and look more than at just your spinal joints and are looking at all the rest of the joints in your body. They're looking at your mouth. They are telling you what to do with your eyes during an adjustment because that has a lot to do with how you maintain your adjustments and how well they're working. So I'm personally seeing somebody on a weekly basis just to keep my head on straight um, because I know that that really bothers my mouth um, when those cervical vertebrae are out of alignment. Um, I've also been doing like a daily myofascial release. So whether it's just like massaging all of these different joints and doing some facial reflexology or getting my foam roller out, um, just making sure that I'm working on all of these chain connections has also been really helpful as well as just continuing with and increasing my strength training because when you're stronger, your bones hold more in place after your adjustments and your muscles get stronger and not tense and pulled tight to pull those joints out of place. So I think that's also been really helpful in just maintaining proper posture, maintaining proper mouth posture and, and to getting better results. So those are some things that I've started and integrated in the past um, month or so since my last video. Um, and some other things that I did um, before I even started my mouth treatment or checking in on my blood work and the systems in my body to make sure that I had enough vitamins and minerals and nutrients to create the new bone and to create the new changes that we are trying to see with the mouthpiece. So like I said in my first video, the mouthpiece is stimulating your periodontal ligaments. So you can expand and then create bone and then expand and form forming bone and expanding more and that's forming bone and then at the end you have this nice new bone formation and your palate stays where it is your teeth stay where they are because you've hardened it and you've worked on it over time and that's kind of the idea so when i started working with my doctor he actually had me sign a piece of paper that said hey you need to really optimize yourself nutritionally eating bone broth eating animal products that are high in vitamins d and a and k and um these necessary nutrients that we know we need to create bone and maintain bone. So I was really impressed by him when he brought that up before we even started treatment. And that made me go back and look at my blood work and my lab work and make sure that these things are in balance. And I'll show you um, what I did there. So I was looking at the extracellular nutrients, which is like your standard blood work, your doctor can run vitamin D, um, you know, vitamin A, those things. And those are markers of what is floating around in your blood, what you have available in your blood at the moment. So I took that data and I also took an intracellular blood test, which checks your micronutrients, vitamins, minerals, amino acids that are inside the cell. So a lot of times we have enough vitamin D inside our blood, but we're having a cellular membrane problem where the vitamin D is not getting into the cell to do its job. And if it can't get into the cell to do its job, you're gonna have a hard time maintaining and creating bone because it's there, but it's just not doing its job. So in my practice, in my life, I like to look at both of those things. So I know what my cellular membrane integrity is. And if the supplements I'm taking and the food I'm taking are being absorbed and are being utilized inside my body. So I find that is really important before anybody starts doing any kind of dental work because that will impact um, your way of healing. You know, if you're getting a, a tooth pulled, um, your body healing, you know, you need to have enough white blood cells and all kinds of things to heal. And so I found that that is a really integral part to getting good results with your whatever kind of mouth work um, that you are doing. So I wanted to share a little deeper about what I was talking earlier about looking at my blood work and looking at my vitamin and nutrient status to make sure that the work that I was doing with my palate expansion and the bone rebuilding that we were working with my doctor 
um, that I was going to be able to get results and not have poor results. Like I'd read a lot in, um, you know, Facebook groups and YouTube comments and whatnot about, um, just not so great things that happened to people's mouth because they weren't, you know, their bodies weren't nutritionally prepared to actually do those processes. So, um, my, you know, my doctor told me and he had me sign a paper before we even got started as a client that, Hey, I really recommend optimizing your nutrition in this next phase, um, because we are trying to stimulate new bone growth and, he recommended eating a very high quality diet of like bone broth and animal protein, saturated fats, things that were high in fat soluble vitamins like A, D, K, um, kind of like a Weston A. Price style of nutrition. And I just thought that was really great that he had brought that up and knew the importance of that at in getting good results. So I took what I do, which is this type of functional blood analysis. And um, these are my results actually uh, over three different years of time. And these are all markers that maybe your doc will run for you, maybe not, um, but you can order all of these yourself actually on my website. So this is an, a look at over three years of time and at looking what is in an optimal range or starting to get in a low range. Um, so anything that's not highlighted is in the optimal range. And we are looking at functional ranges here, not the entire lab range that uh, the medical system and the lab companies use because they're taking the average of all the people and saying that the average is their range and that's the healthy range but the problem is they are taking data from a bunch of sick people and giving us the sick average which isn't good enough so i like going above and beyond in analyzing this information and use a special software where we're looking at optimal and functional ranges um so anything that deviates from that will start to turn this light yellow anything that turns orange is a little further out that range. And then anything red is in an alarm range, which is where the labs use and things get diagnosed from that alarm range, because that's when things get too bad. So um, everything here, you know, vitamin D is really important for our teeth. Vitamin D B12 is actually also important for optimal dental and oral hygiene. Um, phosphorus, you know, calcium are really important. Magnesium is really important for your teeth and your dental health. So I wanted to make sure these things were all in order. Um, HbA1c, this is your average blood glucose, your blood glucose and your blood sugar have a lot to do with your dental health. So getting your blood sugar under control is a really great way to get your oral health in better shape. So, um, taking that a little step further, you can see those different colors, the yellow, orange, and red here of magnesium is just slightly outside this optimal range on the low end, vitamin D also outside on the lower end, zinc as well, all important for your mouth and your teeth. Um, and then you can see some markers also go up in the higher end as well. So I took that a step further and I did a little deeper blood testing. So the blood testing that we just did is what your doctor can order for you. That is called extracellular blood testing. That is getting a snapshot of your blood right there in the moment and analyzing that blood for the amounts in your blood. So taking that a step further is looking intracellularly inside the cell at what is actually being absorbed through the cell membrane into the cell for the cell to do its job, which is the whole point. Um, it doesn't really matter how much is circulating in the blood as long, I mean, it does, but it matters more that their cell membrane is is moving things through. So that is what we can check with this test. And this test looks at the expanse of the past six months. So it's not just a single snapshot in time of these levels, it's over the past six months, what is getting inside the cell to do a cell's job. So again, these are my personal results. And you can see here the things that are listed as borderline and the things that are listed as deficient. Um, so I just had this one deficiency biotin. Um, so this really helps us understand where our true nutritional deficiencies are inside the cell, which is really great. Um, and then we had inositol, which was also borderline. 
as well. So it's just curious to look at, you know, the last numbers and blood work I just showed you where um, things were kind of on the lower end from magnesium and zinc and those things. But you can see if we zoom in right here, magnesium is down here where it says other vitamins and minerals. We have magnesium and I'm getting plenty inside my cell, so, which is good news. Um, zinc again, I'm getting plenty inside my cell. Um, all of these things I'm getting plenty inside my cell. So the other blood work doesn't really make me worried in any way, shape or form um, because my cells are getting enough to do their job. So um, this again, just makes it really easy for me to know what I need to be taking extra in food or in supplements um, to make up for any deficiencies. And then it eliminates me taking anything in excess as well. So this a little deeper, the same test, just a different vantage point is looking at it from this visual perspective. So eventually we want to see this whole thing light up with green circles. And you can see those B deficiencies that I just showed you here in the yellow and in the red, the B7 um, is that biotin deficiency, which was severely deficient. And then the yellow ones are borderline deficient of these B vitamins. So you can see that there is an entire cycle. This is specifically the Krebs cycle, and this creates energy in your body, taking fats, carbs, and proteins and breaking them down into different substances, utilizing all of these different vitamins and minerals. So glutathione is over here processing proteins. This biotin is over here processing proteins. Well, it's over here not processing proteins for me because I'm severely deficient. So this is important for me to know so I can optimize that and optimize my protein intake and optimize these processes of creating energy in my body. So another graphic form is the methylation cycle. So again, these are my same results, um, just now showing you the methylation cycle, which is important for detoxification and gene regulation and cellular health, um, creating neurotransmitters through this cycle. Um, so you can see here again, just the areas it maps out where I'm deficient and why I could probably be having certain symptoms in these areas and not having optimal gene regulation and cell adaptivity, which is really important for me as I age and as I do my palate expansion um, journey is making sure that that's working really well. And so far it is working really well. Um, I've optimized this process beforehand and it's been really great. So um, if this is something that you want to explore for yourself, I'll put a link in the bottom of this video where you can see um, how you can understand this deeper, how you can get this for yourself, all pretty much done from the comfort of your home. So it's really straightforward and simple and fun and really interesting to have this data about yourself. So um, that's it. Good luck in your own journey.